Oh, Tor, can you hear me? Yep. Good okay. morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I understand you're not in Iceland right now. No, I am in in the in the uh, the North America continent at the moment in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. On the other side of the plate, uh, from from my yeah. from my boundary uh, at least. So, <laughs> so yeah, just a just a quick chat because, uh, as we all know, the um, uh, Sundnuker um, uh, suite uh, started to erupt again last night, and it's the seventh eruption this year, or, or in in the area, the seventh eruption at Sundnuker, and. Uh, uh, starting in December last year and now all the way up, that makes it ten eruptions in uh, in the uh, Reykjans Peninsula area over the last three years. So this is getting quite serious and probably also quite annoying um, for the local population and the civil protection. And uh, it seems, from what I read, uh, the eruption is a little smaller than the one in August, at least in terms of the outpouring right now. But uh, what's your information, Tor? Well. Yeah, when, uh, the intensity of this eruption seems to be about half of what the uh, beginning phase of the earlier or the last eruption was. Uh, the fountains are not quite reaching 100 meters, uh, maybe sort of somewhere in the range of 50 to 100 meters high, the highest ones. Mm -hmm. so it, it's a lower intensity eruption. Uh, the uh, seismic activity uh, uh, was somewhat subdued. Uh, uh, at the onset of this eruption and and uh, uh, came in pretty late so there was not a lot of uh, a lot of time in terms of precursory activity mm -hmm. and uh, people of course have uh, different views on wh why that is but the in for me the interesting thing is is that this eruption began in this exactly the same spot as all of the other ones have done uh, with the exception of of the 14th of January eruption. So there's clearly a, a well-established conduit from the, the uh, shallower magma storage zone and up to the surface, which has been reused and reoccupied in all of these events. That's right. And yeah. I, I, I totally agree, actually. So uh, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And and I wonder, because there's a slightly longer time between this eruption and the, and, and, and the previous one. So that means that the that conduit has had slightly more time to, to cool and maybe the the magma that was residing in that conduit was slightly more viscous than what was prior to the, the previous eruption. Mm -hmm. So it might be a slightly more difficult for the magma to come up. That's an interesting and, notion, yeah. And and that might also explain the delay in the in the in the seism seismicity kick in as well. And also that... the subdued seismic activity. So I'm wondering whether that that is actually having some impact on both uh, on the, the course of events, both in terms of intensity of the eruption at the beginning and also the, the seismic activity. That's interesting. Um, this could well be. I mean, several people were speculating what's happening with the seismicity, why there was less of it uh, on this occasion. It wasn't, uh, you know, working up towards the eruption for several weeks or so. And then, of course, the warning time is is, is comparatively short as a result because of that. Several people were speculating. It actually isn't as short as we think. It's just different signal. What yes, we did I see. So it's in the in the, in the the inflation. Mm -hmm. So the inflation more or less stopped on the, uh, what was it, like starting 13th, it started to slow down, and it's been slowing down ever since. And it, it uh, at, at the moment, or right before the eruption started, it basically was, was flat. So there was no inflation, and, and that mm -hmm. is maybe suggesting that you know, uh, as early as, as as seven days ago, magma was actually starting to move. I see, but that didn't really show because other people were speculating uh, that maybe it's pretty hot down there now. This country rock has gone warm as well. It's more ductile. It's very fractured already. There's no need for the magma to make a lot of new fractures. It, it's using existing fractures in a increasingly ductile environment. And uh, some people speculated this could explain the uh, the lower seismicity in the traditional sense, but of I, course I, I, I agree with that. I think that is in general probably the, the, true, and 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 
how it actually works in detail is is is, is remain is going to be well remains to be seen. Basically, if people look at this in 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 in, in more detail, but what mm -hmm. I'm saying is that, that inflation ha had stopped a few days ago. Yes, uh, probably, and possibly as early as as the thirteenth. <laughs> But that's seven days ago. And and no one, the explanation given, official explanation given by the Met Office, if I thought it right, is that there was something not quite right with the satellite information and, and they, they were claiming it was a technical issue. Oh. But I don't think it is. I think it is basically uh, uh, that... As early as, as seven days ago, the mark the, the, you st stopped inflating the source, and then because the mark was already on the move. I see. That's interesting. And, and, so, and if that's the case, then it's going into this, like you say, in, into a ductile environment, more uh, uh, permeable fractures and things like that. But maybe the 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 viscosity was such that it actually it wasn't that easy for it to move through that area. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to break anything because it's just more or less working its way through a viscous material. Yes, I think that's interesting. I think we need to keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the potential impact, the hazards, I mean, obviously the lava is spreading now. It seems to have uh, taken out a few um, um, roads already. So here on this live cam, we can see. If you go to the bar, on the, if, you, if you click on the image there and you go to the red bar and, and pull it back like seven o'clock in the morning. Can we do that minus 10? Just, just, just click on it. Just click on it in the middle. You so see the time. Last night, yeah. That well, was okay, so that, so that, so that, Oh, look right. at this. This was actually quite spectacular. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Now uh, this is uh, six. You wanted seven yeah. in the morning? Yeah. And, and you get here, out there, 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 there you the go. 646 and uh, bit more. So maybe a little more. They okay. say, does it say a time? Mm, I can't see it. There it says 748. Do a, a bit little, more, I think. Uh, oh, no, go, go back a little bit. Go back a little bit. There, this yeah. is what you yeah. want. Yes, this is yeah. what I want. So this is the lava reaching one of the electricity and kind yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, and this is actually quite a nice, you know, it's a nice education for for all of us. I think see that incandescent lava which is moving fairly fast uh, uh, through the area and underneath the power line. And Indeed. we have a, 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 and because it's all incandescent, the heat loss is very effective. It, it, it's a lot of heat lost by radiation. That's right. And that radiation is heating up the power lines. And it's basically cooking the power lines. And this is what comes off there. Yes. <laughs> wow. And you can and you can see the three lines and 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 it and it started heating up the, the one furthest to the right. That's and, because the lava and, is flowing from right to left here. So yes. this is the one that got the most heat. Yes. Ah, oh, very and, intriguing. <laughs> and this is yeah, and this gets more and more intense. And and now these power lines are gone. Yes. Uh, I mean, we saw this from the. Um, June and, and August situations that, 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 that there's wooden constructions involved and that they just burn off yeah. and uh, they, they actually protected the 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 the, the, the mast they, they piled uh, 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 gravel and 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 and, and breccia around the, the mast and built built a protective cover there and that actually is holding so the mast is still standing and that's fine but just the heat from the lava flow basically cooking the power line uh, so the mast, the masts are still there, but there's no lines connecting the masts. Well, uh, whew, uh, it's better than nothing. You can just put up new lines if you need to, if the mast can be saved. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Mean... And, 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 and that, that is not too much of a bother, but they have to wait until the eruption is over. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, at least the lava flow stopped running, uh, flowing underneath there to do that. But, but this is, I mean, I've never seen this before. This is really, you know, a, a good education in what lava can do to infrastructure.
Absolutely. When I was there in August, I remember I took uh, videos and uh, photos of the burned, the wooden uh, power poles or the, the electricity poles. Uh, and now they're replacing them, I guess. But but they're cooking like this. I mean, this is quite spectacular. I just saw the final product and you wonder what happened. And uh, now you can actually see it. Fantastic. A uh, quick word about the hazards. Um, I mean, the hazards are pretty much the same as we had for the last few eruptions. I mean, the roads are problematic. The uh, the Grindavik Down uh, issue is, of course, there, although it's a little bit off right now from the eruption center. And then, of course, the lavas can travel. Uh, right now, they seem to go west and eastward, not necessarily towards the north or the south. But, of course, NASA, that, that can change if there is any kind of change in the, in the fissure or in the vents and... Uh, What's your estimate? Is there anything else we need to watch out for now? No, we couldn't be, in, you know, since there was an eruption, I don't think we could have been luckier with with, with the uh, uh, location of it. And it seems to be staying in the in the middle part of the of the, the nuclear lineament, very close to, to nuclear itself. And it, it doesn't look like it's going to be migrating north or south. So the, and that means that the lava flows are going to be in this area and... and uh, uh, Sort of flowing uh, both here, like you said, west and east of, of, of the vent areas. And when it goes to the west, it actually goes towards the Swartzink and the, and the uh, Swartzink power plant and the Blue Lagoon. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see, like in the image you have right now, that's the the uh, protective wall for the, the uh, Swartzink power plant and the Blue Lagoon. And, and they're they holding quite nicely. The uh, early lavas that came up towards the, the berms or the, or the protective walls, that is added an additional layer of strength and, and protection to the to the berms. So I don't think those infrastructure are in, in danger. There's very little chance that this lava is going to go all the way to Grindavik. And and uh, if it goes in that direction, then the the protective walls should actually uh, also work okay. in that area. So they they they're proving their value quite nicely, and. Uh, it has gone over the Grindavik Road, but that is sort of something easily fixed because it, the lava is really confined to the area where it has gone over it previously. Yes. And and so they would just do the same kind of a measures as they've done previously when the eruption is over. They they make a they just a, make a new dirt track road and. Yeah. Uh, it's it's actually quite cool. I was driving them, and I mean, you shouldn't stop. It's a little hot, but uh, you know, but uh, it's actually surprisingly, surprisingly good. Just to, to it, point it actually, out, it actually, well, the thing is, it actually works. And then, of course, the lava has gone over the 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 the, the, the water main that goes from the the, the Swartzenke, uh, power plant and and takes the hot water to to the towns of Keflavik and Yervik and to, to actually heat up the houses, uh, but. Uh, I was but about that's to say, all, that's, here's that's the water pipe, okay. isn't it? Yeah, there that's is the water, water pipe. pipe. But this was going underneath, I think. It, now it's been taken in, in, into the ground, and it's actually two meters under the surface. And uh, it would take a, 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 a kind of sustained lava flow there to actually significantly heat up that pipe now, because it, you know, the heat transfer is fairly slow into the ground. That's right. And also, and right. also, if you just maintain a good, strong flow through the pipe. That will actually work as a as a as a coolant because it will carry the heat away. That's correct. I mean, it's still warm water, but you know, it's still cooler than a Yes, I it's... agree with that. So, okay, fantastic. Uh, Tor, thank you very much for the quick update. I um um gonna call on you again in the next little while, I guess, uh, if there's any changes and we can talk a little more. Let's just hope it's not going to be like um, like uh, one of the uh, the earlier eruption that another fissure opens up, say in Grindavik or so. But if it stays on that fissure, then I think it's a, it's a lucky one. So um, I, think, I, I think it will. And, and it's already dwindling down. It's starting to uh, uh, concentrate on, on, on a couple of vents. And, and if it continues, it's probably going to stay on those two vents or even get to a single vent and, and lava issue from there. And, probably not going to do any more damage than it has already done. It's my gut feeling as well. So uh, would you be prepared to usher a guess uh, how long the eruption might take? Um, I know, it's I know, long. I know, you know, uh, I get it. I, I will not hold you down to that, I know, but it's it's always interesting to see. Well, you know, we we were pretty close to uh, 
accumulation of magma, the volume that has accumulated before this eruption started is very close to what had accumulated before the previous one. And even though the intensity drops down and drops down very rapidly, we could it have does, yeah. prolonged activity on, on a single vent, which it might be quite weak, but it will be producing lava flow. And if it if that happens, then we are looking at a few weeks of interruption. My my gut feeling is a week to two, maybe. But uh, let's yeah. see how it goes. But uh, I th I hope we all get away with another kind of little scare rather than a serious damage. That sounds great. Okay, yeah. Tor, thank you very much for your time. And um, I'll close our little chat now. So, and uh, we'll be in touch anyway. All the best. Thank you.